بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو آر سیریز آف کے اسٹڈیز ریلیٹڈ ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ایتھیکل لیڈرشپ چیلنجز آف ایتھیکل بیہیویئر اینڈ آلسو بیہیوریل ایتھکس لیڈیز اینڈ جنمن دیز تھری کمپوننٹس آف ایتھکس ہیو اے گریٹ امپیکٹ آن آر لائفز آن آر ایٹیٹیوڈ آن آر بیہیویئر آن آور ڈیلنگس اینڈ ڈیفینیٹلی دی کلیکٹو بیہیویئر and the collective attitude of individuals reflect in a particular institution or organization. Now, there are many organizations that we are going to be seeing in this module on corporate governance. But today, we are going to look at one of the world famous and the pride of Pakistan, the Shokat Khanam Memorial Hospital and Cancer Research Center. Ladies and gentlemen, this particular project is well known not only to Pakistanis, but to people around the world. It is a milestone. It is a significant institution. It is a benchmark for medical sciences in Pakistan and abroad. And again, everyone is aware that in 1990, when Imran Khan and the Pakistani team won the World Cup in cricket, then Imran Khan gave a promise, a commitment to the nation that he would be building and setting up Pakistan's first fee-free, without any fee, without any charges, cancer hospital for the needy. And it would be in memory of his wonderful and lovely mother who had unfortunately passed away due to cancer and the fact that appropriate treatment was not available in Pakistan. So ladies and gentlemen, that is when this journey started and this leader Imran Khan began that journey. And in that particular journey, he required billions upon billions of rupees and the support of the people of Pakistan. And that whole journey of fundraising itself is a unique example when people came out in hordes and not only in Pakistan, but also outside of Pakistan, the expats gave billions upon billions of rupees to construct a world-class hospital, Chokal Khanam Memorial Hospital and Cancer Research Center. And this particular institution when it came into being, then was faced with another challenge. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a challenge in which it had to generate even more funds so that the hospital could provide free of cost treatment to the needy and the poor with cancer. And therefore, a meritorious system was developed that how would people be selected for free treatment. And based upon that, it was free of nepotism, free of discrimination, free of bias, free of corruption, and free of any sort of connection or safarish. So what we see is, is that not only a world-class institution evolved and emerged without any corruption in its construction and its setting up, and it was a wonderful and is a wonderful hospital and research center, but the second thing is, is that the mechanism by which this hospital is running is again unique. And it requires billions upon billions of funds which the people of Pakistan and even many non-Pakistanis have extensively contributed and are still contributing and will inshallah contribute till time immemorial. So all of this, this happens not because of the brick and mortar. Because an institution is not defined by its brick and mortar, it is defined by its people, by its employees, by its stakeholders. That is very important. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, what we can see in this particular hospital is, is that there has been ethical leadership and that ethical leadership has driven the hospital to its standards of excellence. Here I would like to mention, uh, there, there are so many individuals. Actually, how I would look at it is, is that every individual from the gatekeeper to the PN, to the doctors, to the nurses, to the support staff, to the IT section, to uh, the helpers, to the management, everyone, to the cleaners, everyone is a role model. Because whatever they're doing, they're doing excellently. And that is the very crux of corporate governance, that you do things in such a good way that you are able to create an environment of trust, an environment of dependability, and an environment where everyone knows that specific quality standards are always met. So what we see is, is that amongst all of the role models 
these two individuals, Dr. Faisal Sultan and Dr. Virginia Gamle, they emerged and stood out as ethical leaders. And what we can see is, is that Dr. Faisal Sultan, who was the chief executive officer of Shaukat Khanum and now is the uh, de facto health minister as an advisor, special assistant to the prime minister, he has been able to bring about a sea change in COVID management and COVID response. But we are not going to look at COVID today. Today we are looking at Shaukat Khanum. So as the chief executive officer, Dr. Faisal Sultan would be a role model, would be a benchmark, and would walk his talk. That was something which really established trust. And his level of commitment to the cause, to the philosophy, and to the hospital, and to its employees is just phenomenal. Now, even as the chief executive officer, uh, I personally know that he would always follow every single rule that was stipulated. He would not make any rule exempt for himself. And uh, when he would go into the dining room, uh, the hospital dining room, the employee dining room, he would stand in line, he would wait for his turn, he would collect his food, he would sit down, and then he would go back and put his tray back. I'm just giving you a very simple example. So everything that he practiced was based upon self-example. Everything that he practiced was based upon ethical leadership and ensuring that no one gets any favoritism and that there is merit, there is honesty, and there is truthfulness within the work culture of Shaukat Khanum. And that has led to standards of excellence emerging. Now, another wonderful individual in this whole scenario and in this whole framework is Dr. Virginia Gamle. And she was the director of nursing. And nursing is an extremely component, an extremely important component of cancer treatment because it's how you tend to treat the cancer patient and take care of the cancer patient. So, Virginia Gamle, basically from the United Kingdom, came over, a lovely lady, and she established the School of Nursing in Shaukat Khan. And then what she did was, was that based upon her passion, based upon her energy, based upon her catalysm of goodness, she was able to set new standards of support staff and of nursing within Shaukat Khan. And again, her unique approach was that she would always do things herself and make sure that she made others learn through example, through the fact that she was doing something and she would want her staff to do similar things. And then again, to create that camaraderie within the whole support staff and making them understand that they were the real owners of Shaukat Khanum and therefore they had to set the right standards. So Virginia Gamle would do that. She would be part of every training. She would be a part of role modeling. She would be a part of motivation. She would be a part of whatever has been happening in this studio. And she would basically be bubbling with energy, running around from one place to the other and making sure that Shaukat Khanum would meet the minimum standards of quality excellence. And that itself tends to dovetail into corporate governance. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is, is that Shaukat Khanum as an institution is a role model based upon its systems and its processes, its standard operating procedures, and all of its manuals, it stands out. And then in treatment, it is excellent. And it has many leaders like Dr. Faisal Sultan and Dr. Virginia Gamle who have been propelling Shaukat Khanum forward and ensuring that the poorest of the poor get the best medical treatment in the world and they don't even have to pay a penny. And yes, those who can afford, they can pay so that whatever they are paying can come a cyclic process of a revolving fund which can contribute to the betterment of those people who cannot afford it. So this institution has, based upon its philosophy and its context, followed the very principles of corporate governance and showed that there is no need to be superficial. There is no need to do window dressing. There is no need to conceal facts. There is no need to only optimize on making money. But the most important thing is that they are giving hope, they are giving goodness, and they are giving the best treatment to the poorest of the poor without any discrimination. They are paying or not paying, and those who are paying, would they be getting better treatment? No, not at all. So that is how they have set these standards and therefore are an example of ethical leadership and also corporate governance. Thank you so much.